Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00. This is my law series. Today we will look at the three primary means that species of the galaxy access slip space. We will look at their slip space engines. The short Fujikawa Translite engine functions by creating ruptures referred to in some sources as wormholes between normal space and the alternate plane known as slip space, also known as slipstream space or the short Fujikawa Translite space. This engine creates ruptures by using high power cyclic particle accelerators to generate microscopic black holes. Because of their low mass, Hawking radiation gives them a lifetime of around a nanosecond, or potentially a little longer than a whole second, before they evaporate into useless thermal energy of course. In that nanosecond, the engine manipulates them into forming a coherent rupture between normal space and slipstream. A major component of the drive is a set of slip space capacitors which have to be charged before a jump. The short Fujikawa Translite engine generates a quantum field which prevents the ship and its occupants from being directly exposed to the 11 dimensional space time of slip space, instead, translating the ship's presence to the foreign physics of slipstream space and squeezing it through into the higher dimensions. Maintaining the quantum field requires an enormous amount of constant calculations, with larger vessels requiring significantly more such calculations than smaller ones. For example, the slip space translations of a Phoenix class colony ship require 4.3 quadrillion calculations of the quantum field per second. A human slip space drive does not actually accelerate a spacecraft through slipstream. This is performed by the ship's conventional reaction thrusters. Thus, ships with more powerful conventional engines are also faster within slipstream. When active, a Shaw Fujikawa Translite engine emits alpha and beta particles. The coordination and plotting of slipspace jumps, referred to as astrogation, requires an enormous amount of calculations which require a navigational computer or a dedicated AI to successfully conduct. However, the basic jump parameters can be calculated by a human. The elements of selenium and technetium are used to manufacture the Shaw Fujikawa Translate engine. Human slipspace drives are considered black boxes which are very difficult to repair or maintain after they have been activated for the first time. Current 051 considered slipspace drives dangerous, noting the aforementioned radiation and that space-time was said to distort around an active device. Dr. Halsey also observed that in the past several technicians had simply vanished while maintaining and manually adjusting a drive. However, such adjustments were still often necessary by the late 25th century as the superconducting magnets that align the drive's acceleration coils tended to drift out of phase, and the electronic systems designed to control them often malfunctioned in proximity to the drive core due to exposure, the warped laws of physics around the device. A ruptured slipspace drive can create slipspace splinters in normal space, eventually consuming the drive and the entire ship which the drive is placed on. Mechanical failures like slip termination preventable or STP can also occur with slipspace drives, usually resulting from poor maintenance. An improperly mounted slipspace drive can also result in a catastrophic accident. This was the case with the colony ship en route to the Cygnus system around 2550. As a result of a maintenance failure, the drive transported half the ship into oblivion, killing 700. When a similar slipspace rupture was induced by George 052 to destroy the Long Night of Solus in orbit above reach, it created an EMP effect that disabled all satellites within its range. The Coven FTL drives, being more technically advanced than humanity, have numerous advantages in slipspace propulsion systems. While the Shaw Fujikawa engine is said to punch a hole between the realms using brute force, Covenant engines instead take a small rupture and delicately enlarge it with surgical precision. This allows the latter to execute far more accurate slips. Covenant slipspace drives are often referred to as jump drives. In addition to their more powerful thruster engines, it has been theorised by the UNSC that the Covenant drives generate several micro jumps within a single slipspace transition to measure the dilation involved in a jump, allowing them to reach their destination faster. Covenant drives are also generally more flexible and powerful than those of humans. They have thrice been seen to execute in atmosphere slipspace transitions, although the first time the drive in question was controlled by Cortana, a human AI. In addition, Covenant drives can execute successful slips even if underpowered. Aside from this information, very little is known about the primary manner in which the Covenant executes slipspace transitions. Forerunners' understanding of the mechanics of slipspace far exceed that of the UNSC or the Covenant. 
They use small crystals embedded in their slip space drives to manipulate slip space, allowing smoother transitions. They had a superior grasp of reconciliation, the ability to correct or otherwise manipulate the causal effects of slip space travel. This was useful when carrying out large-scale coordinated military campaigns, or simply moving across enormous distances. Forerunner ships were also extremely fast, as seen when the Mantle's approach was able to travel from the vicinity of Installation 03 to Earth in a matter of minutes. Forerunner ships rely on their energy shields to keep themselves during the journey, unlike UNSC ships which rely on just their armour. A slip space flake, or a slipstream crystal, is the central component of a Forerunner slip space drive. They are quantum engineered crystalline devices and were used aboard Forerunner spacecraft to modulate the ship's passage through the higher dimensions, being a major contributor to their markedly stable slip space transitions due to how they mediate the temporal and spatial anomalies inherent to many slip space interactions. This reduces travel times by orders of magnitude over the crude alternatives used by less advanced species. All slip space flakes were chipped from a central core crystal, the location of which was known only to the master builder. The exotic composition and slip space interactions of the crystal were incomprehensible even to the forerunners and were never replicated. The forerunner capital of Maithrillion had an entire hallway located near the council chamber, decorated with millions of spent slip space flakes, some adorning the walls and others built into rotating sculptures. In real world terms, black holes, and in particular oscillating or rotating black holes, are a possible avenue for faster than light travel, in that if rotating fast enough, they could create a traversable wormhole or an Einstein Rosen bridge, allowing the immense distances of space to be bypassed quickly. Particle accelerators like the Large Hadron Collider at CERN are capable of producing microscopic black holes that evaporate in an instant due to Hawking radiation. The aforementioned quantum mechanical magic would be capturing one of these black holes and manipulating it with quantum fields to stabilize it and then force an entire starship through the rift and into the hyperdimensions beyond. The major issue in this is the energy requirement of such an engine. It would be greater than anything humanity can currently produce. So for now, we're stuck here on terra firma. So why not pass the time with a playthrough of all of the Halo games from start to finish? Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below and I look forward to what you have to say. If you're new to the channel and like lore theories and Halo technology being analysed at insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so next time I put a video out you're told the second it hits the shelves. Also, if you really like the channel, consider popping over to Patreon and give whatever support you can over there. It massively helps me out and frees up more time for me to put into this Halo content and other Halo related projects. Thanks again everyone. Now go rest your brain.